siamo in un posto meraviglioso che si chiama la GAM, eh, Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art in Torino. And when I was asked by Caroline Christoph Bakarjev to speak about uh, something in, uh, in, the, um, in the length of 15 minutes, I evoked the possibility, I proposed three different teams. Um, uh, one of the teams is, was uh, Venezia in Cinquecento, the second one is um, Nikola Tesla, and the third one was about the skiing. So, in this miraculous place, uh, when we spoke about skiing, we have a snow, so it means that we are accompanied by this wonderful uh, cosmic forces that follows artist's intuition. But then I hope we won't be struck by lightning because I will be talking now about uh, Nikola Tesla. So, uh, Nikola Tesla was born in July of uh, 1856 and he grew up in a little place um, uh, on the border of uh, Croatia and Bosnia and um, uh, his parents were very open-minded uh, people. His father was an Orthodox priest, but um, Nikola as a young man uh, followed the school and already showed uh, certain interest in exploring the natural uh, phenomena. Also, as a very young man, not far from his seventh birthday, he was uh, struck by the lightning and he survived uh, the voltage of maybe 50,000 volts, which for every other person, uh, the death would be certain. And I think that this showed that he was this uh, kind of ideal conductor that he could handle even the most uh, dangerous natural phenomena. Uh, very often thinking about uh, uh, this uh, lightning stroke hitting Nikola Tesla, uh, it came to my mind that uh, maybe the other creative people from a different field, um, from arts and uh, science, are uh, I, I said, like, uh, good artists are like good conductors. They are the best to translate you the laws from the universe, and they are kind of uh, transmitting this message which they translate uh, through, the, through their works. Uh, and if they are fortunate, this works uh, becomes a public during their lifetime. Tesla studied uh, in Budapest and Vienna, uh, actually in Graz, and um, he uh, soon became uh, a person in Europe of the great uh, notoriety because he was invited to talk at different uh, university or the Royal Society or uh, the, yes, the Royal Society of Engineers in, in, in London, and his uh, performances were linked with uh, uh, certain visual effects and uh, somehow I think he was aware of this importance of um, uh, uh, visual communication uh, with the public and um, he, I think, was somehow at the origin of two or three uh, different art movements and I will explain later why and how. Uh, so, as a, a very young man, he decided to go to the New World, to United States, uh, because he knew that his possibilities in Europe were pretty limited, although he deposed uh, some patents in the uh, uh, United Kingdom, in France, um, in, uh, uh, in Italy as well, I believe. And then um, he uh, arrived uh, with a, a very limited amount of money to uh, New York and then uh, getting off the boat uh, um, in the New York Harbor at the south of Manhattan. 
he saw a man who was in trouble by um, uh, starting the engine of the boat and uh, he asked what's the problem and then uh, Tesla solved his problem and then um, that man um, generously offered him five dollars which was a lot of money uh, and that was the first uh, Tesla's uh, 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 job in, in New York. Uh, later he um, joined um, Edison but uh, from the very first uh, day uh, uh, there were some uh, disagreement or from the first months of their kind of uh, collaboration because um, Tesla realized that um, uh, the only solution for the electrification of the world was alternative current that he actually um, uh, he invented the generators which would produce this alternative current and uh, uh, idea uh, was not uh, well regarded by Edison who already had some deals in different cities in the States and um, Tesla decided to leave Edison and to try his luck with some, um, uh, with some sponsors uh, like uh, JP Morgan or uh, Westinghouse and he had the sympathies of many New Yorkers including uh, the daughter of JP Morgan who was in love but Tesla was a kind of godly creature and uh, uh, it had a good and bad side of this uh, kind of uh, cosmical being and he was totally asexual he neither had a relationship with women or men and he lived this ascetic life and then very soon um, he became a very wealthy person because um, after building the dam on uh, Niagara Falls he uh, signed a contract with the US government and the Westinghouse who was his financier that he should receive one cent from every kilowatt of electricity consumed on the planet Earth. So, after eight months, they came to Tesla, um, Westinghouse and uh, some bankers and they said, okay, now we owe you like uh, first 18 million dollars, which was a colossal sum of money because the townhouses uh, on the Fifth Avenue uh, in those days, uh, like in 1992, were costing two thousand dollars so you can imagine uh, the amount of 18 million dollars uh, and uh, they started explaining there were also some people uh, from uh, other financial institutions that said that it's not good that the world economy should depend on one man and then he said if this is a problem and he tears the check of 18 millions but before tearing the check, he asked the Westinghouse if he would finance his uh, other projects. And then he tells also uh, this contract by which he was the richest man on the planet uh, for six months. And then he starts um, uh, in La Guardia uh, and Bleecker Street on that corner. He starts um, his... Um, uh, laboratory and uh, one of the main things since he lived uh, uh, in hotel like most of us or some of us he lived in Waldorf Astoria and um, the one of the um, uh, highlights of the New York social life was to be invited to Bleecker Street to the um, uh, Tesla's studio where he would demonstrate a wireless connection between the light bulb and the generator that was a few meters away from him. So we find some beautiful photographs of Mark Wayne or other illustrious person in his studio holding the light bulb at a distance, wireless. And one of the fantastic things is that he also invented the neon light in 1890 and uh, he uh, not only that he invented neon light but he started writing in a, 
red neon, blue neon, white neon. He started the, writing the names of his favorite poet. So he is at the origin of the neon artworks, uh, like 60 or 70 years before uh, my friends started using neon in contemporary art. Also to demonstrate a magnetic field, he uh, made a kind of dish and uh, placed in this dish uh, an egg, egg-shaped um, um, metal object, uh, which he um, covered with the gold leaf. And then when, the, when he would put uh, on the electricity, egg started turning at the edge of this dish. And then uh, after three or four circles, egg would stand upright. And I think that um, since he was appearing with his photographs and his uh, inventions almost daily in the New York Times, that this work, which were, I called uh, kind of like a kinetic phase of Nikola Tesla, that he influenced um, uh, that he influenced um, uh, some artists um, like uh, Francis Picabia or Marcel Duchamp for this um, uh, for their objects, uh, which looked like a Tesla coil. Um, he was a big traveler. He invented uh, remote control, and uh, there are some uh, movies showing Tesla. Um, conducting this experiment with the boat uh, in the Central Park where you see uh, this boat uh, being uh, controlled by the remote control which is in Tesla's hands. So he was a man uh, much ahead of his time. So at the turn of the millennium uh, when the New York Times um, dedicated um, one page uh, for the third millennium. They said, like Nick, Niels Bohr split the atom, Albert Einstein wrote the um, theory of relativity. Uh, they said for Nikola Tesla, who had in the US Patent Bureau about uh, 1,346 patents, uh, that he simply invented, it was too, the list of his invention was too long and he invented, uh, that he invented uh, a 20th century. Also in the 50s, when the kind of computers started to be kind of uh, uh, on the desktop of um, kind of scientists and they were working on it, they uh, came um, in the US Patent Bureau, they were warned that there were some inventions of Tesla which were touching also the, that field. And there is also one very important thing that he uh, would uh, some um, uh, of his projects that he sensed that they were quite um, uh, or possibly dangerous uh, for the globe. He would give like uh, uh, one sixth of the project to Americans, one sixth to the British, one sixth to the French, one six he would send to Australia and he would say if all these people unite, if they kind of talk and negotiate, they would be able only to use in the general kind of context this but not um, uh, one country um, as um, a holder of these rights. And I think um, the greatest heritage of Tesla uh, was that he actually counted on the natural forces like uh, electrostatic uh, electricity. And I think um, that the main thing about Tesla uh, is that he wanted to be in tune with the nature and not against the nature. <laughs> Thank you.